A big company is Tesla. It makes great cars. Great. I mean, really amazing cars. I'm all for electric. They have their application. I personally believe in Trump by a landslide. He's going to get most of the state really? states. Yeah. I've been watching an incredible amount of content um, from YouTubers who've been interviewing people in different cities around the US. I mean, a lot of it. Just to yeah. hear people's opinions. And there's a huge number of people who previously had voted Democrat who are now saying, look, I hate Trump, but the economy was better. My city was safer. I'm going to have to vote for the guy even though I hate him this time around. And there's not a single person you're hearing who previously has voted for Trump who's not. And there's a lot of people who really wanted to vote for Kamala and are very disappointed the first debate. She didn't really have any substantive policy at all. Just a lot of word salads, but like, how are you actually going to improve the economy? What are you going to do there? There wasn't a lot. Anyone with a brain can see she's hiding from the media. She's done a total of two interviews so far since she was announced as a candidate to an extremely democratic process of zero votes. And so I think most people uh, who wanted to give Kamala a go are just like, yeah, I can't really, you know, can't really do it. Well, that's my prediction. But again, I'm zero from two. So what would, would you I, would you vote for Trump? Yeah. I mean, if I could, I'd speed run becoming a US citizen just to vote for the guy. I'm deeply concerned about the potential of a, um, a Harris administration. Yeah. She's she's a very dangerous woman. And I don't mean that. That's not hyperbole. She's Her economic policies are just incredibly brain dead. The, the proposal of potentially price controlling groceries, if you want people starving, great idea. The idea of giving $25,000 to first home buyers without any new increase in housing supply is just going to cause huge inflation in the price of housing. Um She's got a lot of good vibes and uh, a lack of policy. And she's literally 180 on every major policy she's had previously. She suddenly, Trump joked about giving her a MAGA hat, and I think that's fair. Um, you know, there's a border where millions of people have come over in the last mm. probably uh, three, four years, illegal immigrants. And Trump's very pro-immigration, legal, merit-based immigration, as am I. But this administration for the last three and a half years has intentionally just let people flood over the border, unvetted, they're doing catch and release instead of sending them back home. So there's criminals and all kinds of... By the way, most of these people just want a better life for themselves, but very destructive policies. And the only reason I can see this having happened is to gain representatives in the Senate based on the census and the population increase. I think there's some pretty bad people. And I personally would say that just in closing, um, Kamala is just a... And Biden are just a puppet for the machine. They're just empty vessels. And Trump is an independent outsider who actually really wants to do what's right for the US. He has phenomenal foreign policy. No new wars started. He's been very good in negotiating terms of, of foreign entities. He met with people like Kim Jong-un as well, which was very surprising at the time. There was Abraham Accords. The guy really wants to end the war in Ukraine. He talks to the media and like, so do you want Ukraine to win the war? And Trump will say, I just want people to stop dying, bro. Whereas uh, the Biden administration actually thwarted a potential peace negotiation early on in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. So I'm, I'm deeply concerned about a, a possible Harris administration. And it's nothing personal against her. I just don't think she's competent to be a leader. And she's certainly not the kind of person that would instill any sense of fear in other countries around the world. You're going to have countries just pointing and laughing, going, this cackling idiot is now running the US. I think a lot of bad actors will be... I mean, and obviously Putin recently endorsed Kamala as well. Did he? Yes. And he was trolling quite... I mean, obviously, he'd rather that than Trump, who, you know, has threatened Putin quite seriously in the past not to mess with the US. Uh, but yeah, Putin was laughing. He's saying, she's a wonderful laugh and all kinds of things like this. He's, he's okay. trolling, but he okay. did strongly endorse her because that would be the best thing for him, weak leadership. Since the Biden administration has been in, though, there has been an enormous investment. I mean, we're talking, I don't know the exact numbers, but I know that we went from very relatively small investment in EVs and batteries, and that has gone just there's now been more investment into that technology in America than there is in China over the last mm -hmm. um, future investments are enormous in that industry. Mm -hmm. Solar, the capacity to build solar has increased sixfold in the last, mm -hmm. um, for, I, th I think the last two years. So there's been this incredible increase in the investment in technology, which is the future, obviously, electric cars, of course. renewable yeah. energy. Trump is saying he would end that. That's my concern, potentially under Trump administration, that the those investments, that stimulus of those industries, which I think we need, could go. Is that I hope possible? it does. Oh, why? Yeah. I don't think that the Biden administration can really take credit for much of this investment. It was inevitable. The companies that are producing these products need to invest in local supply chain and building out infrastructure in the US regardless. And I don't think that the government should be getting involved in this. It's technologically and economically inevitable that this transition happens. 
the government doesn't need to be incentivizing people to build charging networks to invest in battery supply or production in the United States. It will happen regardless. That's my opinion. I don't think the government should be subsidizing the fossil fuel industry either, but I don't think they should be getting involved. This is like trying to subsidize people to adopt the internet 20 years ago. You don't need to. It's going to happen regardless. It's like subsidizing people to pick up smartphones 15 years ago. You don't need to. It's going to happen regardless. EV costs are coming down regardless. Tesla's investing in lithium refinement and production in the United States, in local battery production. They've got their 4680 cells. Whether or not the government is incentivizing companies to localize their supply chains and build products, it doesn't matter. However, I will say on Trump, he is absolutely adamant of massively scaling U.S. manufacturing jobs. And that's actually going to be a hugely positive thing for the entire industry. Because if he's dead set on more manufacturing jobs in the U.S. and you have a burgeoning industry for electric vehicle production in the U.S. and batteries and solar, what do you think is going to happen? Every company that's going to create tens of thousands of jobs in the United States is going to have massive tax incentives to do this stuff locally. That is a much better way to produce and localize supply chain and production of these products and technologies in the United States than throwing money at companies. Instead, incentivize the manufacturing jobs. Everything else will take care of itself. Like I said, this technology is happening regardless. And I don't think the government should be getting involved with these tariffs. But I don't think that there should be import duties on Chinese-made electric vehicles. I totally disagree with that. Both the Harris administration, Biden-Harris administration and Trump are all for the tariffs. I think you should give consumers a choice, but the market compete and let the chips fall where they may. So I strongly disagree with the tariffs. But I think overall, a Trump administration is actually the best thing that could happen for the EV and energy industry in the United States, because he's absolutely obsessed with US manufacturing. And the number of manufacturing jobs that will be created by scaling EV production, battery storage products, and batteries in the United States will be astronomical. But isn't isn't Trump anti-EV? No. He's made a few comments saying he mocking EVs and saying they're... Of course, he's pandering to the fossil fuel industries where the voters are in certain states where the entire state is dependent on the fossil fuel-based industry. He's roasted electric vehicles repeatedly, joking about them not having enough range and you can't go yeah. here and rah, rah. But yeah. he's very clear on the record. He's totally fine with electric vehicles and internal combustion engine vehicles. Just consumers should have choice, and I completely agree. A big company is Tesla. It makes great cars, great, I mean, really amazing cars. He never once said, could you ease up on the electric thing? You would think he would have said, hey, listen, do me a favor. Could you, I could take it out pretty easily, right? It's a sentence, it's a sentence in a speech. But he never asked me to, because I think he knows I'm right. He's going to do great, and there's people that like him. I like him, too, for certain applications. But he never think of it, he, and he's close to me. He never said, do me one favor, just sort of low-key the I would, if I were him, I'd be saying, hey, listen, Trump, do me a favor. Don't mention electric cars again. That you're going to do away. And we're not doing away. We're going to have whatever the market wants. We're going to have gasoline power. We're going to have hybrids. The hybrids are great. They're working good. I think the government should piss off and let people decide because, like I said, this technology is going to keep getting better and cheaper over time. And 10 years from now, all the companies producing ice vehicles will be out of business. So you don't need to tell companies, hey, stop making ice vehicles by 2030 because they're not going to be in business anyway. There's no need for the government to get involved in that. But to be clear, Trump is not anti-EV. He certainly panders to his voter base in the fossil fuel-based states, as you do. Because everyone, imagine you work in the fossil fuel-based industry, you see electric vehicles as a threat, right? Like all politicians, he panders completely to these voters. So but you think he's, he's just making it up? He doesn't really believe those things. He's just saying it to pander to them. No, he's, he's not saying that electric vehicles are good or bad. He's been quite neutral on that, saying, I'm all for electric vehicles, but the overarching principle there is people should have freedom of choice. When he's speaking to a crowd, however... In a, a state where it's predominantly fossil fuel bases, of course, he's going to roast electric vehicles. He's, he doesn't say he's anti-electric vehicles. He doesn't say there shouldn't be electric vehicles. But when he's pandering to a crowd in one of these industries, he's going to joke about electric vehicles and joke about them not having enough range and joke about the fact you can't tell anything. But that's very different from him being opposed to electric vehicles. And if you were going to do this all over our country, this crazy electric mandate, if you're going to do this all... And by the way, I'm all for electric. They have their application. But if somebody wants to buy a gas-powered car, gasoline-powered car, or a hybrid, they're going to be able to do it. And we're going to make that change on day one. And remember, he and Elon Musk have become quite close and have a strong working relationship now. He want, Trump wants American manufacturing jobs. Elon Musk is one of the biggest employers of manufacturing jobs in the United States, and it's going to continue to scale. The Optimus Humanoid Robots, Electric Vehicles, they'll have a lot of discussions about how to incentivize and create manufacturing jobs in the US. And I think it's actually going to be an extremely positive thing for the EV industry, for the energy storage industry, and also for Tesla overall.
if the borders are open and the Chinese government is obviously subsidizing its AV industry pretty significantly, hundreds of billions, and the American government isn't subsidizing their industry, how do they compete? That's not a level playing field. How would they? No, it's not. And this is part of the justification for the current tariffs, although they're not in proportion. I think the EU actually imposed tariffs, which were attempting to kind of level the playing yeah. field for this. Yeah. I do think there's certainly room for discussion. I personally think that a Trump administration or a Harris administration should talk to the CCP and say, look, guys, we need to figure something out because if you're subsidizing products coming into the US, it's not fair for us. Maybe you can sort of you know, play a little bit of hardball and impose some restrictions on trade, or at least to incentivize, because at this point in time, it's totally not a level playing field. But my broader point here is I personally think that consumers should have the choice to purchase products for whatever price they are available globally with or without tariffs. But you do raise an important point. It's not a level playing field. It's not fair. But I don't think that the government should be imposing huge tariffs on these products coming from overseas, which means at the end of the day, the consumers lose. I don't think it's the right thing to do because it's not in the interest of consumers. But it is in the interest of the companies who are probably going to get put out of business by the Chinese EV makers who are subsidized by the CCP. I do remind you again, though, Tesla is currently matching BYD for revenue in China without CCP subsidies. So, I mean, I think Tesla will be fine in this situation. It's just the companies that are already doomed are probably going to go out of business even sooner. Well, that's right. I mean, you know, GM, Ford, everyone, Toyota, their sales in China are shrinking very quickly. Yeah, I think that they're yeah. running for the exits quite quickly. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more, yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect, but even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.